What is fish testing? How we test this, we currently test this routinely in the clinic by the test called FISH, which stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. What you see there is, a, I think it's a beautiful image. I've always loved to see fish images. What you see in, in, in the top part, the blue, that's a myeloma cell. It's been uh, painted with a dye that makes it look blue. So we can only score the myeloma cells. And then you see those little dots, the, you know, the, the red and the green. And we kind of ask the questions, okay, how many dots do we have there? Are the dots separate? Are there dots together? And with these questions, we can make some determinations. You know, is there a, a chromosome that is lost? Is there an extra copy of chromosomes? Are two chromosomes together when they should be apart? And that's how we, we read actually the fish, fish results. In the bottom part, you see a normal neutrophil. So if you had, have had a transplant, you know, we're waiting for those to come back. That's a neutrophil in person. So you know, you know how they look like. And as you know, they all have the same genes and chromosomes, and that's why the probes go there as well, too. What are the limitations of fish testing? Fish testing, iFish, interphase fluorescence in situ hybridization, is a, a test with very limited scope. You can only look for a variety of markers. The good thing about it is that you can get that information on all patients. Most people do a panel where they look for the translocations to the immunoglobulin region. So that test will pick up the 414, 1114, 1416, anything to that immunoglobulin region. It normally uses a split apart probe where normally you would have one signal, but if there's a break, you have three signals, one from the normal copy on these two others. So that picks up one set of the lesions. And then there are copy number abnormalities like 1Q gain, loss of 17P. So if you do the specific translocations plus gain 1Q, loss of 17P, you get most of the lesions that are important for making prognosis. The problem with 17P, which is where the gene P53 sits, is that you can have a deletion of 17P, but it's not important prognostically at all. And it's really the mutations in P53 that count. So there's an important message for patients, which is if you have 15, 20%, 17P minus, which is how it's described, don't necessarily think that you have high risk disease. So FISH testing is probably the most common genetic test done in uh, multiple myeloma. And FISH stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. And really what that means is we're able to look at chromosomes that aren't in cells that are dividing. And we use a probe that fluoresces and so we can see it with a color. And we can uh, stain a cell and we can look to see if that probe is where it's supposed to be or if it's somewhere else. And to do that, we use two probes of two different colors. And we can look to see if they're together or if they're separated. And that's how we look for some of the common genetic events in multiple myeloma, like the uh, 414 chromosome translocations or the 1114 uh, chromosome translocation. Who reads the results of fish testing? So generally, the um, fish is done by a cytogeneticist. Although there are some machines that are capable of doing that, um, it's, not the, uh, it's not widely done by a machine. It's usually done by a person. What are the main probes used in fish? Um, the uh, main probes are one, to look for chromosome translocations. And typically people would look for the 1114, the 414, and the 1416. And then other probes look for gains or losses of chromosomes. And a common one would be loss of chromosome 13. Then we look for a loss of chromosome 17P, and then gains of odd numbered chromosomes, uh, which would be 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 15, uh, 17, and 19, and gain of chromosome 1Q. Do all labs perform the same FISH testing panel? With FISH testing, um, although there are lots of probes that can be used, not every lab uses every probe. Often there isn't 
enough material to do that. And so there has to be some selection as to what you look for. Um, and it may differ from an, in a newly diagnosed patient uh, uh, and then in a relapse patient. Um, and so often you might look for five different things when you do a fish test uh, and then try and draw a conclusion about everything that's happening. What does a fish testing report look like? The reports are really confusing, even for people who do this for a living. Um, and it's because there's different ways of reporting it. Um, so for instance, they, they, they should tell you the probes that were looked, uh, that were examined, and they should tell you if it was normal or abnormal. Um, but sometimes an abnormal signal doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. Um, and so uh, to, to give an example, uh, the 1114 chromosome translocation is identified when a probe from chromosome 11 goes next to a probe from chromosome 14. And if you see that, you call it abnormal. But if by chance you had three copies of chromosome 11, which is also quite common, that might be reported as abnormal. It is, because there's three copies, but it doesn't mean that there's an 1114. So the, the interpretation of the, the fish results can be very, very tricky for someone who's not trained in it. Although they, there, should, there should be a summary by the cytogeneticist describing what they think is present. When should fish testing be done? They should have it done as part of their initial bone marrow biopsy uh, to evaluate multiple myeloma. It's part of the um, revised international staging system for multiple myeloma, which is applied to all newly diagnosed patients. Um, and uh, in order to stage a patient, you need to know whether they have a 414, a 1416, or a deletion of 17P. And so it, it should be done at that point. And then when a patient um, has relapse, um, and it seems as though their disease may have changed character, then that would be another important time to reassess. Because there, there's some genetic events which are present at the very beginning and stay with the patient throughout the course uh, of their disease, um, such as the chromosome translocations. But then there are other events that seem to come on with tumor progression that are associated with perhaps more aggressive disease, like uh, gain of 1Q or deletion of 17P. And so it's important periodically uh, uh, during the course of a patient's disease to reassess uh, the myeloma to see if it's acquired uh, genetic events associated with disease progression. What does it mean to enrich the sample used during fish testing? So an important uh, aspect about doing fish in multiple myeloma is to be sure that you're actually looking at myeloma cells and not normal cells. And so um, many places will purify out the myeloma cells before doing the fish, or other places will look for the presence of uh, light chain genes in the cell that they're looking at, kappa or lambda. Um, and if you do that, then you can have a reliable indication of you know, what genetic events are in the myeloma. But many places don't do that. They just take the whole bone marrow, which often by the time it gets to the, the fish laboratory is dilute and might have only, you know, 5% myeloma cells in it. And then it can become very hard to, to know um, how many uh, of the myeloma cells have any given genetic abnormality. Now, when it comes to chromosome 17P, um, it's important uh, to think that when you're looking at only the myeloma cells, so you have to make sure that the lab has done either some sort of selection for the myeloma cells or done uh, cytoplasmic immunoglobulin fish, then in that case, it may be that only a fraction of the myeloma cells have 17P deletion. Um, and there are reports that if the fraction is say, lower than 30%, um, that it is not associated with a poor prognosis. But that um, has, has been somewhat controversial, and um, I think in part it's influenced by, the, the, by other people who haven't purified out the myeloma cells. I think more important is sort of more recent genomic data, which has said or shown 
that if you've got deletion 17P, um, if you've got a mutation of the gene that we think is critical on 17P, and that gene is called P53, and if you've got both the deletion and the mutation, then that is really poor prognosis. But if you just have the mutation with no deletion, or just the deletion with no mutation, then um, that is not a poor prognostic feature. And what, what that implies is that we really need to start doing sequencing of our newly diagnosed patients so that we can tell uh, if they have both those events. Can FISH testing determine your P53 status? The FISH testing can really just tell you if that whole big piece of DNA is present or it's not present. But it can't tell you if there's a point mutation in the gene. So to get the point mutation, so that, that's a, a mutation of a single nucleic acid, one base, really small. The only way to, to see something like that is to do sequencing of that gene uh, in order to see it. And so you can, you can, you can never get that the detail from fish.